portion of our meeting for public commentary and inquiry. Anybody would like to be heard, please step up to the microphone on township matters. Go ahead, sir. Oh. Hi, my name is Brian Klinger. I run the uh, Morristown Wildcat Football Club in town. And I'd like to commend uh, the board for their patience in getting this Cornine field started and hopefully completed by August 15th when we start the season this year. Um, however, I do have a, a couple concerns. I saw the plans, and um, there, there's two items I'd like to just pass around some photos um, that are not to be constructed or um, there's nothing going to be done with those items. The two items in concern for me are the scoreboard. I mean, the scoreboard looks like it's ready to fall down. And the, uh, the press box. Um, some of the plywood's missing. Some of it's rotted underneath. Uh, there's a storage container within the box, which what I wanted to do, I wanted to meet with whoever's in charge of facilitating this between the contractor and the town, and I was willing to uh, get donations from businesses within the town and get guys within my organization to help build something, whether it's a new press box or to make it look like it should have look. I mean, we're spending probably a million and a half dollars on something, and uh, to, to leave those two items the same, I think, is sort of short-sighted. Um, you go look at the pools that they just built. Uh, they spent a ton of money and they didn't skimp on anything. So I feel in the best interest of the community that they should they should really address these. And I'd be willing to sit down with whoever. It may not cost the township anything. Um, I think we have enough guys that know enough people that we can get donations and, and some manpower out there and, and do a lot of the work ourselves. But I need to get the okay from somebody. So. It, it, it seems like it's a, it's a worthy project, and especially if uh, you can find the donors, I, we will give it every consideration, and I think we'll try to arrange a meeting between yourself and Bill Fulch, who's the head of our recreation, and uh, you know, have either Mr. Quinn or myself. Uh, yeah, if, if we can arrange that meeting for next week, I, that, that would be great. Cause, Time is of the essence, especially with the season right around the corner. Um, you know, we, we really want to get this thing correct. Can we do that? I think it be Mr. Pulse right now, Mayor. Yeah, we'll okay. have to speak to him. Let's check on it. Just take a shit number. So we'll yeah. Yeah. I'll write it on that, uh, yeah, on that thing. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know. If you want to hammer that across the room, maybe you don't want to do that. No. I don't want everybody to call me that keeps happening on the corner of uh, Punchbowl and Old Turnpike Road. A number of years ago, the um, uh, road itself was resurfaced. And, and I don't know whether this is responsibility of the Morris Township, you know, Morris Township, but you can let me know. Um, there's a dip in that as you go under the railroad um, bridge there, and it's constantly getting washed out. So we are, you know, when we come out of there driving our cars, we have to be very, very careful that we're not getting our tires caught in the uh, police there. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that, is, our, is that our township responsibility? It is. It is, okay. Is there anything that can be done? Because that's a constant thing that's happening. Happy to discuss with our Department of Public Works. Okay, very good. Okay. The Thanks. second thing is the status of the Abbey property. I noticed that we have the, um, Lights there on the corner of Punch Ball and what the status is. That's unrelated to that project. Excuse me? The traffic signal is not related to the uh, Abbey project. Well, I, know, I know we were looking to get a traffic signal there for a number of years, but what is the status of the Abbey? Anything? I, don't have, I don't have anything to report. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. So 
Bill O'Reilly. Oh. Jim O'Reilly, 50 independents. But it just struck me the question about the format of the agenda, the resolutions. Uh, some of them have amounts of money associated with them, others don't. But it looks to me like that a lot of them that don't mention amounts of money probably have expenses associated with them. I was just wondering, uh, is that true? And uh, should we be putting expenses or estimated expenses there on the resolutions? They are in the resolutions. They're in the resolutions, right? Correct. And, uh, is there a reason for not including it in the, in the one or two line summary uh, listed under resolutions? Which one are you referring to, sir? Well, a number of them don't have uh, don't have uh, amounts associated with them. Uh, Some you can't quantify, like the reimbursement agreement. Won't know, mm -hmm. Mr. Quinn won't know until the bills come in. Okay. They come for the uh, town home services. So is that true where you don't put uh, amounts of money that you don't know or can't know at the time of the resolution? It all depends if the tax committee is asked to appropriate money or not at this time and knows that they're not. Uh, also, 8418 amendment temporary budget. I mean, I guess it's an adjustment <coughs> to the budget, but what, what is the nature of it? Salaries. Uh, what would the amount be? $50,000. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else care to be heard? Hello, I'm Jeannie McKay, 10 Walnut Street. Morristown Township. Um, I have uh, two questions. The first one is about the Colgate Palmolive um, site. Um, there's several mounds there, and um, rumor has it that they're contaminated, or it's it's the reason why they're still there. Um, the neighborhood would like to know what's what's the process and how long it's going to take, and are we going to be informed? if there's some type of danger that's floating in the air when they move that? I'm not aware of any contamination. We don't know of any. None of them reported, would have been reported to us and there hasn't been. There hasn't been anything? I mean, if there were, if they were moving contaminants, they'd have to get DDP approval, and obviously we know about it. Part of the project is most of that stuff is there's going to be recycled, most of the material. Okay. Do you know when that process is going to start? I know that uh, they got the final approvals of the uh, planning board. They're working on getting all their plans in, getting their building permits. So I would think it's probably going to take place sometime over the summer. Another question is, um, I, I wanted to know who makes the decision on allowing certain developers to um, build um, multiple units and not include affordable housing in them, and then to choose a location to put affordable housing. Who, who makes the arrangements with a developer? Let me, maybe you don't understand that. Um, I live in, on 10 Walnut Street. A developer is putting a two unit duplex on MLK and Walnut Street. Mm -hmm. One will be affordable housing. In order to do that, he's doing a six unit on Mount Kimball with no affordable housing. Who decided to allow him to do none on Mount Kimball, but one on Walnut and then okay, Martin well, Luther King? The Board of Adjustment. Board of Adjustment. Okay, so I would have to go to that next meeting and ask that question. I don't know if you would be able to, because that application isn't before them. It's not like it's not like a meeting like that we have with open public commentary, that the public commentary would be in reference to their, their projects that are currently being heard before them? I was at the last one last month, and they... Oh, for the current one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.
any of them will be over 10 hour head road. Uh, first, I just think say how great it is. I think that uh, this was all captured on video tonight. A great night, a great meeting here at the township through the Wildcats and the police officers. This is all good stuff. And that the content's getting out there. That's great. Um, a couple of follow-up questions from uh, prior topics at previous meetings. Um, I was at the planning board meeting earlier this week, and the uh, Men in Road um, requirement, or requiring it by the township, came up. And the attorney was mentioning something about um, I've been missed an ordinance, or they were putting together something that would um, potentially deal with the future. If this deal was not completed, it protects the township from a legal perspective. Is that, uh, was my understanding that that's already a done deal? Is that deal been consummated, so to speak? There's no outstanding for any finalization of that or the acquisition of the road that's complete? I'm not sure you're, you don't know in reference to the Colgate project? Correct, the men in access road. Yeah, yes. the access road, so that's all that's complete. That, that, that has been done uh, through Mr. Forgione and um, having access for that. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to also just bring up a few other things. The traffic signal that was referenced earlier up by the Abbey, um, the, I guess the power box or the equipment that sits on the ground um, coming, if you're coming up punch bowl and you need to make a left or right onto Madison, the box where they positioned it, it's actually obstructing the roadway a little. I've been taking that turn for many years and the positioning of that is just something I think um, that you might want to look at um, and, and report to if it's a county or whoever owns that equipment. State of New Jersey. What's that? State of New Jersey. State of New Jersey. Is there any way I could, uh, just something to uh, be aware of? Um, at prior meetings, there was also reference to um, the addition of the um, affordable units um, that went into the Colgate property and that um, the units that went in there into the um, Colgate area. There was something that that was sort of accelerated and done, um, or it seemed like it was being that decision needed to be made because there was some early obligation in the beginning of June related to the fair share housing settlement, that there was some compliance date that we were sort of trying to meet. Does that ring a bell, Mr. Mills? Is that accurate? I, I didn't hear the introduction, interrupting part of what you were saying. What, what is so, your so, so the additional units that went into the um, colgate Palmolive track, the 30, I think there were an additional 33 30, units. Yes, in, yeah. And that was sort of done I know it was all passed and agreed upon, but I know there was a reference to an early June deadline that they were trying to meet as part of the settlement with fair share housing to be compliant right. with had, the fair share housing. Correct. We had an initial, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if it would be a preliminary hearing, but the court called it a fairness hearing to make a determination that what the township proposed, in fact, was satisfactory or, quote, fair. And that was in June. I think it was June. No, no, no. no it was uh, in February, forgive me. In June, we have the final. I got confused on my dates. It's okay. Yeah, June 50. June, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have the exact date on the tip of my tongue. But Correct. then at, on that date, we need to have proof not only that hypothetically what we proposed would work, but that we have put in place the mechanism to not guarantee, but provide that as much as we can possibly that it will function as intended. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we had a preliminary look, see the court said looks good, come back and show us that in fact you've got a realistic prob okay. <coughs> probability for developing the affordable housing. Right. And I wasn't aware that the woman that, that spoke before me mentioned an affordable housing unit, I guess that's going over on uh, Martin Luther King. Is that the street I'm thinking yes. of? And so going on Martin Luther King, but it's related to, the, I knew I was aware of the Mount Kemble development. So is that, affordable housing unit that's proposed for over a more than does that include into the number of units and what we're trying to get compliant towards? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and so and then the answer to the woman's question is that gets I, that gets decided at the Board of Adjustment. Those votes then don't come to the, the Board of Adjustment votes come to the Township Committee no. for approval, so they're just mutually exclusive. Yeah. Distinct entity. All right, thank you. A um, couple of the resolutions, the um, the maintenance bond for five for five hundred sixty-one thousand seventy-four dash eighteen. What is that a maintenance bond for? What? 
Just general maintenance? No, for the, con for the construction of James Place off of uh, James Street. Off the town of the Republic. Off the James Street. Corner South Bay Parkway. And that's what the maintenance fund is for? Yes. Which to ensure that the public <coughs> improvements will perform as they are intended and expected for a period of two years from the date they were accepted. Thank you. And then 7318 then also references James Street. Is that just for some other kind of work on James Street? That's not affiliated with it? That's the same? Yeah, that, yeah, it, it, the, that developer also was required to post what's called a performance bond. So not only in any given project when the improvements are complete, they have to remain at the expense of the developer properly functional for two years, but on top of that, the township doesn't want to be left with a project where the improvements are half completed and somebody walks off the job. So they have to post a sum of money called a performance bond to guarantee their performance. Thank you. Um, the 75-18 words, the uh, jacking for the water project that was referenced also earlier on the Honeywell property, I think someone asked a question about that earlier. Is that for, does that work get done above ground, below ground? Is that the final completion of that project? Is that an above ground project, a below ground project? Anyone? I know Mr. Just an engineer, but I don't know, but I would believe it's underground. Underground. And so the jacking part of it is to push the pipe through. <coughs> gotcha. Thank you very much. Um, 7718 Golden Rivers Housing is referenced. Um, is that a particular builder or development that? It's a small two uh, <coughs> house development off of James Street. Small two house development. Thank you. Um, finally, I'd just like to uh, just make a brief comment on the planning board meeting that I know Mr. Mayor, uh, Mayor Pusa was out on Monday night where we all got sort of an education on the, the small cell towers, which I know is coming back to this body for the final read. Um, I think that was a very informative session. Um, uh, there's some into, into experts there, and it was uh, quite an education. I know that's coming in front of this committee next month for a final read, but um, they're promulgating across the country. This is something that you know towns aren't, don't have a lot of leeway in here because the federal government can you know, take their request permission to use the right way and so on through all that. But I know it's a very new issue. Um, I know it's coming up for final read. Um, I would just encourage everyone to try to research and look into it. I spent about an hour and a half reading on it and something that's going to go from you know, 100,000 cell towers this year to 850,000. And you'll start noticing them as you drive around. Is you see what they call the small, small, the small cell towers. And what's interesting is they're not small, they're not called small cells because they're actually small. It's because they have to be, they only can commute and communicate in small lengths. Right, so they weigh 400 pounds, they're big, they go on poles, so a lot of concerns, there's a lot of issues I think that need to be considered and um, I'm just not sure what the urgency or necessitation is to pass something finally next month without fully maybe thinking about it or perhaps even, it's really an issue that I think is going to impact the, the landscape of communities, not just here but everywhere and when these things start turning up in people's neighborhoods or uh, the majority, you can't expect them not to get upset about it, so is there any thought or notion of this board of communicating out to using a messenger. I know Mr. Slade has put together a great memorandum on this or any way to communicate to the residents who are going to all be impacted by this, what the plan is or how they can participate and perhaps ask questions or get the answers. So I would just encourage some sort of public forum on that. Um, maybe a township open up the town hall a couple of nights like you did for the garbage cans. I mean, I know there were a number of successful meetings for that garbage can implementation, but if these small cells are going to be, towns are going to be popping up all over town. I think it's really something worth discussing and getting out ahead of and informing the public on this. Uh, it's no, it's better just, earlier than uh, the way it's written is that I put these up in residential areas, they're going to have to go before the planning board or the board adjustment. I'm sorry, say that again? Or these small nodes no. to go up in yes. a residential area, it, the ordinance, as the way it's written, will require them to go before the planning board or the board of adjustment. So they just can't do it. That, that was written that way to protect the residences from. That's um, correct. And I believe once they do submit their application, they have 150 days to actually have an answer given to them where they can actually take the municipalities to court. Um, it's a tricky subject. It's a complicated subject. But I don't think, as I was listening to the planning board meeting the other night, and correct me if you think this isn't a correct um, 
comment, Peter, but if they want to, there's over Verizon already wants to put 45 in Hardy. They're not going to come before the planning board 45 times. They're going to come, they're going to have an overlay, a site plan. This is where we want to put them. It's not like it's going to be, it's coming to your stream. There's going to be multiple iterations of this. So I think it's really something, an important issue for uh, this body to consider how we're going to educate the public on it and proceed and deal with it for, you know, it's uncharted territory. Communities all over the country dealing with it. And I don't know if there's anything that actually necessitates a final vote next month, unless there's something in closed session that I'm not aware of, but I would consider it to hopefully uh, think about it. communicating out on this and working together to get it right the first time. Thank you. Our telecommunications Thank you. camp will be present. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Mayor Menusco and the committee and, uh, and, and support. For the committee, my name is Tamara Harris, and I am running for Congress in this district to represent New Jersey's 11th district. And I just wanted to share some uh, observations uh, from this evening. I wanted to say that it was encouraging to hear about the uh, affordable housing initiatives and, and what the county and the township is doing to actually ensure that there is affordable housing for the community, because that is one of the most urgent issues that I hear uh, as, I, as I move around the district. So I wanted to say that I was very encouraged by that. I also, I also wanted to share uh, just a perspective uh, as the council and, and the committee uh, thinks about some of the concerns of residents in the community. I had the opportunity uh, a while back to be involved with a sewage project uh, that it basically created a lot of concerns in the, in the environment with the residents living in the district. And the one thing that I wanted to share was my experience uh, showed me that uh, getting out early, uh, educating the community, uh, anyone that had the potential to be impacted by uh, some environmental uh, consequences uh, with the Colbate palm olive, getting out ahead of that, communicating, uh, maybe having someone explain what the DEP permitting process is and why it may or may not be necessary for this cleanup and removal would be helpful. Uh, I think it's really important, uh, especially given that we have so many crises in New Jersey, uh, including in Passaic with the DuPont, uh, with Wayne in Passaic County, uh, the DuPont crisis, and, and other uh, dynamics, and knowing that Jersey has a large number of sort of super fund issues, that it's important to allay concerns in the community, especially families that have children. And so I would just like to uh, suggest to the committee that if, if this issue arises, it might be helpful to have a, a forum or some communication to just share with the community so that they uh, would be calm and, and not be concerned about this crisis. Of what seems small could be made to be so much more if, if you can just prevent that with just having communication early in the process uh, and engagement. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your time. Team 38 Moral Lane, Morris Township. Um, I know a couple of meetings ago there were a couple of people who spoke and very concerned about schools and safety in schools. I think it was the truth for you. One of the people who spoke about that. And um, there was another a woman who was very concerned. He, she just moved here from Livingston. So, um, uh, first of all, any comments I make have nothing to do with my position on the Board of Education. I'm here as an individual and I, this is not as a Board of Ed member. So associate me from them tonight. Um, I know there was a meeting about uh, the security measures being done in the Morris uh, School District, and I wondered, I know Ms. Wilson was there, I wonder if anybody else had the occasion to attend? No? Okay. And that's a question, not an accusation. And also, I, uh, Mayor Mancuso, the other uh, woman brought up these um, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, this national movement, mm -hmm. and asked if you had any interest in participating in that. I wonder if you would look into that or not. I'd look into any situation I have. No, no, did I, you I, at this point? Or did, have you at this point? I have not. Okay, great. Um, may I give out some material? Would that be allowed to? Why not? For the sake of people here, 
Um, there's a Mayors Against Illegal Guns is a uh, organization that was actually started a number of years ago by former Mayor Bloomberg of New York and former Mayor Manning of uh, Boston. And it really is a bipartisan group, which now includes over 1,000 municipalities across the country, both present and former mayors, uh, calling for common sense gun laws. And uh, my age is showing. And I'm not going to take a lot of time, but their principles are very straightforward and I think very uncontroversial. They resolve to one, punish to the maximum extent of the law criminals who possess, use, and traffic in illegal guns, target and hold accountable irresponsible gun dealers who break the law by knowingly selling guns to store purchasers. I have no idea what a store purchaser is. Extend background check requirements to all gun sales, including private sales that take place online and at gun shows. Oppose federal efforts to restrict cities' rights to access, use, and share data that is so essential to effective enforcement by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Work to develop and use technologies that aid in the detection and tracing of illegal guns. Support all local and state regulation and invite other cities to join in this national effort. It seems to me that this is a pretty non-controversial, pretty straightforward thing and Mayor Mancuso, I would urge you to please look into it and also urge you to join. Um, recently, the township of, of Chatham passed a gun resolution, of which I will not read, but I gave you a copy, and it certainly is a lot stronger than that, which we find in this resolution. I think that, you know, I've spent my life as a physician trying to save lives, and I've seen people die, both natural deaths, cardiac deaths, and violent deaths in emergency rooms. And the look on someone's face as they're dying, especially a young person with a gunshot wound, is something that will keep you up all night, every night. And I don't see why a uh, mayor and the township should not endorse something like this. What do we have to wait for? Do we have to wait until there's a gun shooting in a neighboring state, within our state, in a neighboring town? If just by putting our name on something like this, we could prevent one ounce of blood being shed by students or people in this town, then it's worth it. I think that if we don't join in on something like that, and uh, Mayor Incluso, I'm not trying to target you, but you are the mayor that shame on us. New Jersey, interestingly enough, if you look at the states across the nation, New Jersey is in the top three states in the nation that has signed this. There are close to 100 communities in which the present and or former mayors have signed this. These towns include Dover, Madison, Milburn, Montclair, Morristown, Summit, Springfield. I could go on and on a hundred communities, and I'd hate to think that we're not part of that community. I think it would be a sin if we don't do it. The other thing I wish to bring up is that um, the Board of Education in its latest budget has added a one half a million dollars to the budget. One half of a million dollars totally for security purposes, totally to, for the, the resolution, by the way, please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mills, that was passed tonight to pay police, uh, what is the name of the officers, S, uh, S3, S3 officers, is actually not paid by this august, they, this august body, or this, the township pays them, but we as a school board pay the township. So an uh, extra half a million dollars of our tax money is now going to have extra policemen in uniform and armed walking the hallways of our schools. Frankly, it's something we have to do. But frankly, if you think someone's going to show up at our school with a, an automatic rifle 
and not cause harm, it's impossible. We're glad to do it, but I'd much rather spend that $500,000 plus the other $500,000 we're already spending on educational purposes rather than seeing our kids, seeing armed guards walking through the schools. And if joining in with just the, and obviously the federal government is not doing this, and I know that the state has strong gun laws, but if we can just prevent one injury, one death, one tragedy, by doing this, I urge you, I beg you, I plead with you to do this. This is not a partisan issue. This is not a Republican issue. This is not a Democratic issue. This is a moral issue. I plead with you, please, do something. I think by doing what we're doing with these special police, I think we're doing more than almost any other community that I know of. And I just think it's a, it, 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 it's a salutary thing. And it's something that is very, very worthwhile and we've given a lot of thought. I, I think we're not disagreeing with each other, Mayor Mancusa, but we're, we're talking about some. I'm saying instead of trying to treat smallpox, why don't we vaccinate against it? And putting police into schools is putting a Band-Aid over a festering sore. And if we can do anything to prevent that infection, that disease, then what does it cost? What, why, why do you have an, I, 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 I don't want to make it first book. What is your objection to this? I, I mean, and don't answer me now. Maybe read it over and at the next meeting. But I, I think that, that we, as a population, as people who elect our representatives, I mean, if you really have an objection to this, I, I'd really just like to understand what your objection is. I, I don't get it. And maybe I'm wrong. So please, you know, I'd rather, I, I mean, unless you feel like you want to, but I mean, I'd rather under, try to understand why this is so, something like this would be so objectionable to, to anybody. I, I don't, I don't get it. I think you're coming at it from a, a, a different angle. I think we have done more than any other school district I know, and I would expect that if we took a poll of our township residents, they would be absolutely uh, thrilled that we have uh, taken care of this situation. So and I voted for it, and I'll vote for it again. Okay. But, but what is enough enough? I mean, should we spend a million next year, and then two million the next year, and every time? I mean, this doesn't cost us one red nickel. I, I mean, what's... Is that a politically incorrect statement? But one, one, one cent. I mean, I mean, I, I apologize. Uh, but what, I don't understand why one is exclusive of the next. I voted for this as a school board member. I will vote for it again. But, but why does that exclude this? Why can it? There's so much misinformation in in the document. I don't want to debate it with you. The mayor said he'd take it under advisement. I'm not looking to curtail what you have to say. But well, I don't want to. I think it. you've made, made the point. He I, I just agree. doesn't want to speak for this body without consulting I, the I, body. I was going to say, fine, come, come back. I mean, you know, but I, 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 I don't get it. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Anybody else care to be heard? Michael? Yeah. Um, Mike Schumer, 16 Powder Horn Drive. I, I just, uh, Peter, what's what's your role on the, uh, on the school board? I'm a member of the school board. You're a member of the school board. Two meetings ago, I, I was, because of the conversation with respect to school safety, everybody's concerned about that. School safety is a huge issue. I, I asked, what is the Morris School District doing with respect to school safety? Now, I think we're talking around that right now. What I got was that somebody said that you're hiring one person. Well, I think there's X amount of schools in the Mara School District. Uh, how many times have you done a tabletop exercise, a communication exercise, actual exercises where the students know what they're supposed to do at the high school level, grade school level, that type of stuff? I, I asked at that meeting, I would hope somebody from the school board could let us know 
just what they're doing with respect to school safety. I'm interested in this because I've been working through my academic career with the Department of Homeland Security down in Washington, D.C., uh, Office of Homeland Security Preparedness here in New Jersey. I understand this. I remember when Sandy Hook uh, uh, took place. I brought the, the person who actually conducted the response to that to New Jersey Institute of Technology to hold a seminar for 200 people to address school safety. So I'm concerned about school safety. Uh, certainly, gun control is, is a relevant issue. Uh, but I would like to see, at least the Mars School District, and I think Mars Township and Mars Town are, are a piece part of, of this entire thing, uh, just what's, what's happening in the community with respect to school safety. Uh, so uh, I, I'm still an open question. Uh, if somebody from the school board, who, whoever is responsible for establishing school safety, uh, should, should let us know what they're doing. Can I, can I say something in response? Yeah. Um, there, our superintendent, um, Maggie Pendergrest, um, just recently, I think it was on April 10th, did a presentation on our safety and security plan that is in place and being implemented in the schools. And I did go to it, and it was um, it was very impressive. It has to be, this has to be a model approach to... Um, I'd love to see it because I've it, been working with school districts in the United States for quite yes, a while. And, and part of what was impressive to me was the foundation of it is, is um, encouraging the growth of a healthy community. Mm -hmm. So there's a big focus on relationships and wellness <clears throat> and um, you know social emotional growth among the students and supporting positive relationships among everybody, the kids, the staff. And it's um, and it's upon that foundation that they're adding the the police presence. Okay. And so it's so 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 the layering of police presence yes. is integrated in this, this emerging plan. Yes. So, so the police presence is a good thing. So, it okay, is. And uh, sure. also, they, he did say that it, it should be online um, okay. soon, if it's not yet, on the, on the school district website. Okay. So that's where you can find the answer to your questions. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. My name is Ken. Is there anything else care to be heard from the public? Good evening. My name is Pamela Watson, and I'm just here for some clarity and understanding. Your address, please. To Corey Road, Unity, Morristown. When Ms. McKay came up and she asked about um, who who is a, who gives a contractor the permission to build their project one thing and put the affordable housing somewhere else. It was said the Board of Adjustments is where she would have to go and that they have a meeting but you can't attend that. Do they have public meetings, the Board yeah. of Adjustments? Any, any time someone proposes to construct something that's not specifically permitted or conforming in a zone, they would end up either depending in front of the Planning Board or the Board of Adjustment. Both bodies separate and distinct from this entity here. Okay, so help me to understand the township committee. Is it umbrella of the board of adjustments and the planning board and any other committees? Only to the extent that this body appoints the members. Not so, all of them. The planning board members are have a couple statutory appointments, but those other open seats are appointed at this level. Okay, so this committee appoints people for the board of adjustments? And the planning? Yes. Okay. Then um, they don't report to you, they don't tell you what to do, they just do what, what they want to do? Totally independent. Why? Well, that's the way the statute created it. I, I, I never examined the wisdom of it, but that's the way it reads. I think I need to get on that board. Thank you. Anyone else going to be heard? Mr. Grazel. Uh, good evening, Jeff Grazel, one Indian, one Indian Head Road. Um, before I start my comments, I think maybe uh, 
Mr. Mills could comment uh, on the two questions that were just asked about the, the, the Board of Adjustment. Um, what's the method why, but the method by which somebody or a decision could be overturned at the Board of Adjustment? Maybe they, you could speak to that for the public. The party would have within 45 days of the publication of the notice of the decision to file an appeal to the Superior Court. It becomes judicial after that. And has it been 45 days? Must be filed within 45 no, days. Has it been 45 days passed, do you know? The application that Ms. McKay is currently uh, pending before the Board of Adjustment. Currently pending. The, oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were asking generally the procedure. No, I was. I was. Once the application is decided and the notice of the decision of the particular body is published, that's what starts the 45-day period. Okay, so if a resident is not happy with a, a, a ruling by the Board of Adjustment, um, they have that they have that method of, mm -hmm. of, yes. of yes. proceeding. Correct. Okay, just wanted to make that clear for the public. Thank you. Um, so with regard to my comments, um, is, is Mr. Nunn on the phone listening? No? Okay, so hopefully he'll be listening to the tape afterwards or maybe he'll be watching on TV. Hi, Mr. Nunn. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to congratulate him on his uh, his honor this week. Uh, he was uh, again uh, noted as one of the three top lawyers um, here in, in Morris County, and uh, I think it's a great honor. And wanted to wish him well on that. And uh, given his background as a, as a lawyer, uh, I wanted to also urge him to finish out his term on the township committee. I know he's not running again for election, uh, but I would hope that he would finish out his term so he can uh, give his expertise to this to this body. Um, as a lawyer, so uh, I look forward to seeing Mr. Nunn complete. I don't think we're saying a question. Good. That's good to hear. Um, second, with regard to uh, comments that were just uh, made previously about the, the cell towers uh, or the, the, the nodes that, that we're going to be talking about at the next meeting, I, I also agree that uh, we shouldn't be premature in pushing this forward. There's a lot of development in this area. Um, there are many towns that have not passed any ordinances yet. And I would urge the body to hold off and see how other people proceed uh, before we proceed ourselves and actually put something on the books. Um, I don't think that there's any rush to do it. Um, and if we hold off for another few months, we can gain some experience by seeing what other towns um, have done. Um, I also wanted to uh, urge you to, I haven't read the ordinance myself, um, but I look forward to seeing it. Uh, is there anything in the ordinance that uh, allows you to uh, I want to say just like the, the, the main towers, the tower like a Del Barton is a tree. You know, is there any way of hiding these things? Camouflage. Camouflage, that's what I'm looking for. Is there any way to camouflage them? And is, is a, a camouflage requirement uh, written into the ordinance? From what I've read of the ordinance, uh, each of these uh, boxes, so to speak, will be camouflaged. I'm not quite sure what happened. Okay, so I just hope that the language uh, with regard to camouflage is, is very strong so that we could um, uphold it to a very high standard. Uh, my other comment regarding the, the, these notes is I don't know if there's any opportunity for the township to require some kind of uh, payment for use of our right of way. Um, there are going to be many of these nodes going up around town. Um, there's a possibility of requiring some kind of licensing fee uh, for use of our right of way. Um, otherwise, we're going to give away our right of way for anything that anybody wants to put in there. So uh, I think that should be explored. I don't know what other towns are doing again, but if we wait and we try to explore that option about charging a licensing fee, it might be a way of, of monetizing it and bringing in a new revenue stream into the township. Well, the, the idea of the license is currently under exploration, but the idea of charging licensing fees, while a good one, the state has told us no. Uh, okay. Except That's, to recover our internal costs of the engineering department to renew. Okay. Uh, I, I believe in pushing the balance. I, I don't know if there's a way of actually putting forward a licensing fee and let them come back and tell us we can't do it. But um, uh, I'll let you guys talk about that amongst yourselves as a, as a possibility. Um, next uh, is I read that the county is uh, has announced the roads that are resurfacing, the county roads that are being resurfaced. And uh, to my disappointment, uh, Mendham Road was not included in that list. Um, the section of Mendham Road that, that resides in the township from Whitehead Road to Kadena Road is in terrible shape. It's been in bad shape and deteriorating shape for years. Um, every year I call the, the county road department and ask them to patch it up. And last year they actually 
took a small section of road from uh, Picatinny down to uh, close to Kadena and actually resurfaced just one lane of a section because it was so bad. But the, and that has deteriorated again. Um, the road is in, it needs to be resurfaced and I, I urge this body to speak to the, the county freeholders and ask them to put that into their budget. Um, go out there, it's like a rumble strip in some, some parts. Okay, so uh, please somebody talk to the freeholders about that. Uh, next is, uh, I wanted to talk about the storm debris in the township. Um, I read the announcement from um, Mr. Eshman about how the Department of Holy Cross is going to proceed, and I completely understand that you guys, the, the township needs to find a place to put it. I understand why it's taken so long. I have no qualms with that aspect of the storm debris. I'm glad there's a plan in place now. Um, but what I'm very disappointed in is that there is storm debris still in the streets in so many places in the township that are hazards. On my street, I have several examples. I'm going to start with my street. But on March 7th, when we had the snowstorm, and I know that the nor'easter came after the snowstorm, and there was even more debris to clean up, there was a tree that fell down across our street. Okay? A peat, a big tree, probably it is three feet in diameter, not three feet, two, two, two to two and a half feet in diameter, fell across the street. A piece of it is still lying in the street six weeks later. Okay? I don't care about the stuff that's been chopped up and put on the side of the road, it's out of the way, it'll get cleaned up eventually, but there's a piece of a tree in the roadway. Okay? I drove down Western Avenue, there's actually a, a red <coughs> cone where near Villa Walsh and, and Rolling Hill Drive, there's a red cone in the road because there's a piece of a tree sticking out into the roadway, so they don't want people to drive into it. Why hasn't that been taken care of? Like, there's a cone in the road. On uh, Kadena Road, there's another cone in the road because there's debris coming off from the side of the road. Um, in, in Mr. Sisler's neighborhood on, on Mill Road, I was driving by Mill Road up to uh, Greystone. At the corner of Bromley Way, there's a huge limb sitting in the street. It's been there for at least two weeks, sitting at the corner of Bromley Way, but in the street. I, I don't care if it's on the side of the road, but it shouldn't be in the roadway. So I'm, I'm a little disappointed in how the township has, has, cleaned up, has not cleaned up um, the municipal roads. I completely understand why we haven't taken the debris away, but the roadways really um, should be cleared. And it's been, like I said, six weeks since the tree fell on my street. Um, so I, I hope uh, we can find some money in the budget. I know you're going to be passing the budget. Um, we have some surplus in the budget. That's what surplus is supposed to be used for, for emergency things like this. We need to be spending some money to clean up our town. Thank you, sir. Okay, and the last comment is uh, regarding uh, Honeywell. Um, I've seen a lot of development in Honeywell. There's a lot of building for the residential uh, part of the property. Um, I wanted to know if you can give the uh, public an update on the status of uh, the residential building, how much of it's complete, when it's supposed to go live, and also uh, what's being done with the commercial space. Has any renovation been done on the commercial space? I thought part of the renovation was supposed to be that they're taking down some older buildings and going to be putting up new buildings. Um, so could you speak to that aspect of that plan also? We have not received any applications on the commercial yet. For that no applications for commercial. Has there any been any internal re renovations that were promised for existing buildings? Most of the existing buildings are all going to be taken down except for the one that Honeywell is retaining. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've allowed all of the residential to proceed 100% without requiring the commercial to be completed? It was over an eight year period, if you recall, you were on the council then and what you guys approved. Yes, I want to clarify for the public. So, you know the answer? I know the answer. I want, I want, you know, I want the public to know. Because we've allowed the residential, it was supposed to be a, a, a you know, a concurrent thing. That residential is supposed to be built with the commercial. And we're letting, we're letting the commercial space lie fallow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, Jeff, it was never meant to be concurrent. Mm -hmm. But we'll look into it. Okay, so when is the time period done? When is the year period done? You don't know any year period? You have period to look at the development okay. plan. It was, it was a, a, all timed out on a, something they called a development plan, Jeff. I, I have not looked at it in years. So I'll have to look at that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else in the public care to be heard? Thank you.
forgotten it before. Uh, it's just, just informational. But what is the status of the uh, affordable housing or fair housing? How many units do we have? They're all ownership, I think, not rental. Uh, and how many are we being asked? Are we being asked to build or provide more of them? And the, has the township committee considered whether we should offer rental housing? We have both rentals for the two years. Yes, sir. More schemes. Okay. We have approximately 200 affordable units for sale. We have a number of small little projects that are also rentals. Mm -hmm. And with this agreement that is in place, the real development potential is 400 of 25 percent will be rentals. That's and we have another 300 and some odd that we have to be obligated to at some point. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Pat Sims, Western Avenue. Um, just touching base on Jeff's comment. I know. The storm took a lot of trees. I'm with the Office of Emergency Management, so I was out blocking those roads, moving some of the trees. But um, as he was saying, Western Avenue up towards the Armory, it was pretty bad. But one road, and I know just from this last storm, just the other day, some more trees have come in on Bailey Hollow, and that's a windy road, and some of the branches are hanging out. So, you know, one day I almost got swiped by a school bus because everybody's trying to go around the branches. So, like you said, maybe just move them, you know, out of the way or something. But I know it's it's a big task for the township to take on, and I do commend the work that everybody's been doing on it. Thank you. Our, our question. Yeah. Yeah. Question Avenue is on the list, and our, our township is still cleaning up the debris. Okay, so yeah, like you said, Bailey Hollow, just because of the winds in the road. You know, with people trying to go around the tree on the bend, so. Thank you, Pat. Yes. Uh, we go over 10 hours in road. Um, a lot of information has come out of this meeting. It's been a great meeting. A lot of different topics were covered. Um, but I wanted to just come back up because having thought about um, two things. One is the cell tower, the small cell tower issue. I know Mr. Slate put together. It was made available to the public at the planning board meeting. About a four-page primer, what they look like the size of them, an overview for, I believe, this committee and maybe the planning board as well. Um, I know we use the messenger for all kinds of things, about debris, garbage camp programs, all kinds of great information that gets pushed out. If we have this document that already exists in terms of helping to educate the public on this, I think that would be a wise use of this because it's coming no matter what, and I think getting the information out there might be uh, something to, positive to consider um, that I would like to suggest. And. Um, that's really it. And then that's not it. one other question, John. I'll just ask the question. Two, one is still on the cell towers, and I know it's coming up for final read next month, uh, Mr. Mills. Is there anything that, from a legal standpoint, or anything that's compelling us or requiring us to make a decision, have a final read, and then a vote on this next month on such a big issue? Is there anything that the public might not be aware of that's expedited? Not, necessar not necessarily next month is, is as a driven date, but the. The Telecommunications Act that the, the federal government sought fit to put in place in 1996 yes. forbids any municipality from taking any action that is perceived to have the effect of prohibiting, and those are the actual words in the legislation, the advancement of these kinds of hideously ugly services. I don't like them either. They're atrocious. They're phone calls. Right, but isn't no action also an option at this point in time with municipalities figuring this out? What, what is compelling us Eventually, to make a decision? Uh, Pushed by Verizon? Well, yeah, and we're being pushed by Verizon. Is that correct? We have the action taken, although it may be perceived to be taken by the municipality, although the perception of it may be to the opposite, is intended to try and put the brakes. I shouldn't even say this on the microphone. Intended to slow the process down. I'm sorry, why? Yeah. We're not looking to. You're intending to slow the process down by taking a final vote and making a decision on it next month? If you. If educate yourself with respect to the contents of the ordinance. Right. Maybe you'll have a better understanding of what I'm saying. Okay. Um, so the, the the answer is that there. So not taking any action is an option at this point. Take us. From my understanding, not all municipalities are all at the same time taking action on this no. issue. So why? Not taking. Or not. Yeah. Not taking an action is not an option. Just not taking an action is not an option. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else care to be heard? If not, I'll entertain a motion for closing the public session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Thank you.